All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from, and I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. And today is Monday, October 30th, 2023, you know, Missile Monday. And I have this article from Fox News. And it says, Pentagon announces new nuclear bomb 24 times more powerful than the one dropped on Japan. So I'm just going to go into this article and bring out a few scriptures. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying and straight to the point. It says, the Department of Defense announced its pursuit of a new nuclear bomb that will be 24 times more powerful than the one than one of the bombs dropped on Japan during World War II. The Pentagon is seeking congressional approval and funding to pursue a modern variant of the B-61 nuclear gravity bomb, which will be designated the B-61-13, according to a DOD press release. Today's announcement is reflective of a changing security environment and growing threats from potential adversaries. Assistant Secretary of Defense for Space Policy John Plume said in the release, the United States has a responsibility to continue to assess and feel, <coughs> excuse me, the United States has a responsibility to continue to assess and field the capabilities we need to credibly deter and, if necessary, respond to strategic attacks and assure our allies. Says a fact sheet included with the release said the B-6113 will have a similar yield to the B-61-7, which, according to a defense news report, has a maximum yield of 360 kilotons. The load is 25, it's like it, the load is 24 times larger than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima or Hiroshima, Japan, during World War II, which was about a 15 kiloton bomb. The B-6113 would also be about 14 times larger than the bomb dropped on Nagasaki, which was 25 kilotons. According to the fact sheet, the powerful new bomb will also include the modern safety, security, and accuracy features of the B-6112. The announcement comes amid rising tensions around the globe, with the U.S. conducting a high explosive experiment at a nuclear test site in Nevada earlier this month. Corey Henderstein, the Deputy Administrator for Defense Nuclear Nonproliferation at the National Nuclear Security Administration, said the test was meant to advance our efforts to develop new technology in support of U.S. nuclear prolifer non-proliferation goals. <clears throat> Since they will help reduce global nuclear threats by improving the detection of underground nuclear explosive tests, Henderson said of the experiments. The test came as Russia was largely expected to announce it was pulling out of the 1966 Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which was designed to ban nuclear explosions anywhere in the world. However, the treaty was never ratified by China, India, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel, Iran, and Egypt. The new bomb will be deliverable 
by Modern Aircraft, the release notes, and will be designed to give the president options to strike hard and large area military targets. If approved, the bomb will replace some of the current B-61 sevens currently in the U.S. nuclear stockpile instead of increasing the size of U.S. nuclear stockpiles, the release noted. The B-61-13 represents a reasonable step to manage the challenges of a highly dynamic security environment, Plume said. While it provides us with additional flexibility, production of the B-61-13 will not increase the overall number of weapons in our nuclear stockpile. So again, you know, you have the U.S. also, you know, developing, you know, more nuclear weapons. You know, Russia has, you know, the Satan II. You know, China has, you know, their hypersonic missiles. North Korea has theirs. You know, you have, I think it was either Iran, if not Iran, one of those Middle Eastern countries, you know, that are pretty much developing, you know, nuclear weapons as well. But again, tensions are rising, you know. These nations are pretty much gearing up for war, you know. But ultimately, we know that, you know, Babylon is going to be defeated, you know, by the bear, which is Russia. So I'm going to start in the book of Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 16. And it says, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And yes, that's talking about these nuclear weapons that are being created. You know, the smith, you know, being those scientists, you know, because that's what a smith does, you know, like a blacksmith, you know, a person that pretty much creates, you know, weapons, you know, for war. And then while I'm here, because I looked it up earlier, then I'm going to bring the same verse out in the NLT, you know. Same verse, Isaiah 54 and 16. In the NLT, and it says, I have created the blacksmith who fans the coals beneath the forge and makes the weapons of destruction. And I have created the armies that destroy. And yes, what are part of the Lord's army? These nuclear missiles, you know, these nuclear missiles are a part of the Lord's army. You know, these <laughs> are the weapons of destruction, you know. This is what the Lord is having these men do. You know, he's having, you know, Esau Edom's scientists create these weapons ultimately, you know, to take himself out, you know, because, yes, as we know, our Lord Yahweh Shah ultimately is going to take him down, you know, him and these other nations. But ultimately, you know, on a smaller scale, Esau Edom is going to take himself out, you know, because, again, Russia is going to defeat America in this third world war, you know. So now I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 51, and I'm going to start at verse 1, and it says, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that raise, it's like that rise up against me a destroying wind. I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. You know, so again, all these nations, you know, that are against America, you know, they're pretty much going to destroy her. Primarily Russia, you know, even America's allies are going to turn against her, you know. And then that destroying wind is going to come from, you know, once those missiles hit, you know, that explosion, you know, is going to create that huge mushroom cloud, you know. And then that mushroom cloud is then going to push, you know, 
you know, that, that wall of fire that's going to come from that explosion, you know, that's pretty much going to sweep the land. You know, that's the destroying wind. You know, the perfect example being, you know, the scene from Terminator 2, you know, the scene where Sarah Connor had the dream where she was pretty much destroyed by the nuclear missiles, you know. When she saw that flash, you know, the only thing she seen was that wall of fire coming and it burned her up, you know. That's that destroying wind that the Lord is going to send upon America, you know. So now, I'm going to come to the book of Joel, chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame of slaki, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. And yes, it's talking about these missiles, you know, because again, you know, it says that fire and pretty much burneth behind them. You know, you're going to have that rocket system that is going to propel these missiles, you know, to their specific target. Now, you know, these certain missiles that they have, you know, are pretty much programmed to hit you know, certain cities, you know, here in America, which, you know, that's what a lot of them are going to do. But again, that fire that burneth behind them is that rocket system that is going to propel it from one continent to another, you know. And again, says the land is as the Garden of Eden because you still have, you know, parts of America, you know, that look nice, you know. It's still parts of this land that, that's beautiful, you know. But overall, like it says, it's going to be a desolate wilderness, you know. Because once this destruction takes place, America is going to be left completely desolate, you know. This land is going to be a desert, you know, to the point where no man will ever dwell here again. You know, and I'll bring a little bit out in uh, the book of Isaiah 34, you know. And then the primary point in verse 3 it says nothing shall escape them so nothing you know no one you know that's left here save the elect you know because only the elect of the nation of israel is going to be delivered from this destruction that ultimately the lord is going to bring upon this place you know anyone left on the shores of america you know they're going to be destroyed by this fire you know nothing is going to escape as it says Verse 4, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained on their faces shall gather blackness so again before these missiles hit these people are going to see them coming you know they're pretty much going to see their death coming you know because it's one thing to know you're going to die but it's another thing to know you're going to die and actually see your death coming you know these people are pretty much going to be sick to their stomachs you know you know they won't be able to do anything but pretty much wait for it and it's not going to take long you know the the most amount of time people are going to have is about 30 minutes you know that's the most amount of time the least amount of time is about 15 you know and that's not a long time for these missiles to get over here you know because that's how fast they're going to be traveling you know 
one Satan two missile, it'll only take it, you know, 15 to 30 minutes to get over here from Russia, you know. So these people, you know, these Americans, you know, they're doomed. Verse 7, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone on his path. It's lucky they shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. And yes, you know, once these missiles are launched, you know, they're going to be in a specific order. You know, no missile is going to thrust another one. You know, they're not going to, you know, bump it to each other and knock it off course. Or, you know, America, you know, they're going to try to use their, their counter missiles to, you know, shoot at these missiles to try to stop it but ultimately you know it's just going to bounce right off of it and they're going to keep coming you know nothing is going to stop them you know and it says you know nothing's going to break their ranks and again bring this out again go to the look up this word sword and as it says So this is the Strong's H 7973 says Shalak, you know, and you have the word, it says weapon, missile, you know, this is the Lord's sword, you know, ultimately we know Esau Edom is, you know, the Lord's weapon stick, but you know, this is, you know, that ultimate sword that you know, the Lord has prepared for Babylon these nuclear missiles, as it says. Missile, weapon, sprout, shoot, you know. And then, so look at the definitions. It says, a missile of attack, spear, you know. Like, if people just don't understand that this is what's coming to America, missiles this is <laughs> this is in the bible you know for those non-believers out there that don't believe in nuclear weapons you know explain that explain why missiles are being talked about in the bible if they aren't real or if america isn't going to be destroyed explain that you know verse 9 they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? And yes, you know, there's going to be so many of these missiles. Ultimately, you know, the warheads. But, you know, there's going to be so many of them. They're going to blot out the sun and the moon. You know, the stars. Wherever, you know, people are in the world, they're going to see them. You know, because it said the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. It's going to be a day of darkness, you know, it's going to be darkness, you know, so, you know, there very well may be, you know, a solar eclipse, you know, because again, you know, there's going to be so many of these missiles that's going to blot the sun out, you know, because there's going to be that many, and then, you know, it's going to make the earthquake, you know, this destruction is going to be so great that, you know, is going to shake the entire earth, you know, and then I'm going to bring that out, you know.
the book of Isaiah chapter 24 and verse 20. And it says, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. And yes, you know, this destruction is going to be so great that, you know, the entire earth is going to quake, you know. The angels, you know, you're going to have the angels pretty much holding the earth together. So ultimately, you know, the earth isn't destroyed, you know, but that's how great that destruction is going to be, you know, because that's how angry the Lord is with this place, you know, because the wickedness is reached unto heaven, you know, so he's has a very special judgment, you know, for this place, just like. Sodom and Gomorrah was left as an example of how not to live. America is going to be that example, you know, of how not to live, you know, because we clearly see, you know, what it's like when the wicked beareth rule, you know, evil multiplies in the earth, you know. So now, I was thinking of something else. You know what I'll bring this up? It's the book of Malachi, chapter 4 and verse 1. And it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. And again, America is going to be wiped out completely, you know. This destruction is going to be extremely great. So I'm going to jump to the book of Revelation chapter 7. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. You know, so again, you pretty much have you know, the four angels holding back the destruction because, again, you know, you still have a couple of prophecies that have to take place, you know, like the prophecy of the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, you know, the mark of the beast has to be made mandatory, you know, that prophecies, that's one of the main prophecies that has to come to pass before this destruction takes place, you know. Now, as we know, you know, you do have Russia still at war with Ukraine and you have, you know, Hamas and Israel at war right now. But, you know, that's just a build up, you know, to World War Three, because we know World War Three isn't official until Russia and America are at odds, you know, until they're the main two countries that are going to go to war with each other, you know. So now I'm going to jump to the book of Revelation, chapter 9. And I'm going to start at verse 15. And it says, And the four angels were loosed, which, per like you, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. So yes, the Lord pretty much have, you know, has it slated for you know, a specific day, time, you know, month and a year, you know, when this destruction is going to come, you know. And this is the third part of men, you know, you have three classifications of men, you know. You have the sons of God, which are the Israelites, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel from Judah down to Issachar. You know, you have the sons of men, which are, you know, the other heathen nations, and, you know, you have the sons of the wicked, which would be, you know, Esau, Edom, you know, or the nation of Edom, you know, which would be the so-called white man. You know, he's the third part of man and he's ultimately, you know, the destruction is for him. You know, you do have two thirds and, you know, these other heathen nations that are pretty much going to be, you know, collateral damage. But ultimately, this destruction is for Esau, you know. Verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000,000. And I heard the number of them. 
And thus I saw the horses and the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And yes, you know, again, it's pretty much describing those missiles, you know, because once these missiles are launched, they're going to be launched, you know, into space, you know, they're going to leave, you know, the ozone layer, which is the firmament, you know, get their specific, you know, trajectory, you know, get their specific coordinates for their target, you know, then they're going to come back down to earth and they're going to come back down to earth on fire because they're going to be traveling so fast, you know, so that's the heads like the lions, you know, because again, they're going to be on fire. And then the tails like serpents, again, you know, that rocket system that is going to be propelling them back down to the earth, you know. And then, you know, it says that with them, they do hurt, you know, the heads. That's talking about the warheads, you know, because that's the part of the missile that does the most damage. The warhead, you know, it's going to be 200,000, 000, you know, 200 million warheads that are going to hit this land. You know, and ultimately destroy it is going to melt everything, you know. So let me see this real quick. We we'll jump to the book of Second Peter chapter three. In verse 10, it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And yes, you know, again, that fervent heat, that extreme heat, you know, these missiles are going to burn hotter than the sun, you know. Since the sun is 15 million degrees Celsius, you know, these missiles are going to burn at 100 million degrees Celsius, you know. So these missiles are going to burn, you know, way hotter than the sun. That's why it says that fervent heat, that extreme heat that is going to melt the elements, you know, here in America. You know, that destruction is going to be extremely great and devastating, you know. And you also, you know, before I bring that out real quick, because, you know, you, you, you have... You know, those that are going to get caught up, you know, you have the heathen nations, but ultimately you have two thirds of the nation of Israel, you know, that are going to get caught out there. So this is the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, and verse eight. And it says, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So, yes, you know, two thirds of the nation of Israel will be destroyed by this fire, you know, ultimately not all of the two thirds because, you know, you have, you know, members of, you know, like one brother says, the two thirtieths, <laughs> you know, that pretty much, you know, they're going to be put to death in various ways, but ultimately that's going to be that, that main way that the two thirds are going to be cut off. Now they're going to be, you know, reborn in the kingdom, but this is how a lot of them are ultimately going to go out by way of this nuclear fire, you know. So I'm going to jump to the book of Zechariah 14. And these missiles are going to burn so hot. This verse right here is describing exactly how hot it's going to be. That people are going to be melted, you know, while they stand upon their feet, you know. So this is Zechariah chapter 14. In verse 12 and it says and this shall be the plague it's like yeah, and this shall be the plague wherewith the lord will smite all the people that have fought against jerusalem their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth and yes again a prime example 
is Sarah Connor, you know, in Terminator 2. You know, the only difference is, you know, the fence that she was hanging on to, you know, that fence should have been melted, you know. Ultimately, the only thing that was left was her skeleton, you know, and she was still screaming even after, her, you know, her flesh was pretty much blown off. But who knows exactly, you know, what it's going to, you know, be like now, Lord willing, you know, we don't want to be a part of that. You know, I speak for myself when I say I don't want any parts, you know, of this judgment that the Lord is going to bring upon two thirds of our people, you know, for their wickedness. But again, just this verse alone is describing that people are going to be melted, you know, by this fire. Because it's going to be that devastating, you know, and then I'm going to end it on this. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 34. And I'm going to start at verse 1, and it says, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people, let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all the armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountain shall be melted with their blood, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the nations it's like it, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and after it's like it, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth from the vine falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree, says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. So again, this sword is ultimately for Esau. That's who Idumia is, you know. It's the Greek way of saying Edom, you know, because this judgment ultimately is for him, you know. For all the wickedness that he has done and is doing in this earth, you know. So I'm going to read that again. Isaiah 34 and 5. And it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. You know, because again, the Lord hates Esau, you know. And he's going to take him out. It's lucky. Verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness. And with the blood of lambs and goats. And with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. So, yes, you know, modern day Basra would be America, you know. And again, the fat of these kidneys and rams are these people, you know. Because again, ultimately, you know, America is just one big altar, you know. That the Lord is going to, you know, sacrifice or, you know, yeah, make that sacrifice. And these people are, you know, again, going to be those those rams and those goats that are going to be burned up, you know, they're going to be a burnt offering. It says, verse 7, And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. <laughs> Excuse me, Slakia. Says, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. You know. So the Lord is going to avenge the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. You know. Just going to read a little bit more. Says, 
and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall be come burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. So, yes, you know, this destruction is going to be so great that, you know, this land is going to be on fire for a while, you know. So who knows exactly how long, you know, it's going to take for you know, this land to stop burning because, again, you know, nuclear fire, you know, it just you just can't put it out. You know, it pretty much has to put itself out. So ultimately, again, this that smoke that's going to ascend, you know, up forever and ever. And it's not literally going to, you know, burn for, you know, all eternity, but it's going to be burning for a long time, you know. Verse 11, it says, but the cormorant. And the bittern shall possess it, the owl also, and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it in the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. So, yes, you know, the lines of confusion, I mean, you won't be able to tell, you know, which state was which. You know, you won't be able to tell where Michigan is, you know, Texas, New York, California, you know, just to name a few. You know, you won't be able to tell where each state was or which you know state is which you know verse 12 they shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom but none shall be there and our princes shall be nothing you know it says and thorns shall come up in her palaces nettles and brambles and the fortresses thereof and there shall be an habitation of dragons and a court of owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satire shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. Therefore shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate, you know. And again, is describing, you know, these desert creatures, you know, that are going to dwell here, you know, after America is done burning. You know, once that flame goes out, you know, and is a complete desert, you know, these are the animals that are going to dwell here. You know, vultures, owls, you know, dragons, you know, not the kind that fly, you know, possibly, you know, Komodo dragon, bearded lizards, you know, things of that sort. But, you know, these are the animals that are going to dwell here. You know, no man will ever inhabit this land again after this destruction. You know, it may just be like, you know, Planet of the Apes, you know, America is going to be the forbidden zone. You know, we won't even be able to touch this land because, again, it's going to be a memorial, you know, of how not to run a kingdom. So that's pretty much it. You know, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all our praise, honor and glory due to Yahweh, by Hashem Shai. By Shemar Kakwadash, I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from, and i like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. Till the next time I say Shalom.